And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome everyone to this webinar. Today's subject is how to create content with both great structure and great language. And your host today is Tom Aldous, but Tom couldn't be here because he is stuck on an airplane at the moment, so I am filling in for Tom. And uh, while you can read all about Tom on this slide, my name is P.G. Bartlett. I'm responsible for product management at Acrolynx. And um, I have done some webinars, too. So, and with that, our guest today is George Bina. George is with Synchrosoft. And uh, George, why don't you uh, say hello to everyone and uh, describe your role briefly at Synchrosoft. Hello everyone. My name is George Pina. I'm one of the founders of uh, Synchrosoft, the company that develops uh, Oxygen XML editor. And uh, uh, I, I will have a slide later on when I, when, I uh, when PG will uh, give me control and I will say some more about uh, uh, Synchrosoft and Oxygen and what we do. Great. Thanks, George. And uh, very glad to have you with us today. Um, and as George said, he'll be doing both a demonstration and a presentation in a few minutes. I do have some introductory slides, but before we get started, I would like to ask a question, a very simple question with a survey. Uh, are you an Acrolinx customer? Yes, not yet, or no? <clears throat> and uh, we're curious. You'll see, you'll get a later question about uh, whether or not you're an Oxygen customer later on. Because uh, we are curious about our audience, how much of you, how many of you are already uh, customers of Acrolinx, how many of you are customers of Oxygen, how many of you are new to both? And looks like three quarters of you have already voted. That was fast. I'm going to go ahead and close the results and let you see them. As you can see, about one sixth. I can do the math. One sixth say yes, you're Acrolinx customers. About a fifth, not yet, and about sixty percent no. Good. Glad to know that. So let me tell you a bit about Acrolynx. <clears throat> and we start at the end by telling you who our customers are. And uh, you can see the list now. Primarily, we, we sell to companies who create lots of content, so not unlike uh, the Oxygen customer list. In high tech, computer hardware, networking equipment, that sort of thing, telecommunications equipment and software, medical, primarily medical devices, industrial customers of all kinds, and aerospace, defense, um, and automotive customers. So we, the topic here today is, is two parts, right? It's, it's about uh, great language and great, and great structure. George is going to talk about the structure part. I'd like to talk about the language part. And to create great language, it needs to be accurate. It needs to be complete. Um, should be consistent across different types of uh, across different types of material. Should be understandable to your audience, and of course, the audience needs to be able to find them. Now, what we'd like to focus on are the bottom three. And the reason we'd like to talk about those is that that's where we can bring some automation to bear. In the case of accuracy and completeness, that's something that you need a, a an editor, an author to really focus on. That's not uh, it's hard to get computer technology to help you with those areas. But in the bottom three, we can in fact uh, we can in fact help you with that. So to create content as we call people ready, global ready, search ready, let's talk more about what that means. So consistency, an example, there's lots of different ways within a company you may talk about your product. In this case, the example is a pump. Act, uh, marketing knows very well to call it the Acme Wonder Pump, but support has a different name. Tech Talks yet uses yet another name, and so on through the organization. So it's not just about terminology, but speaking with one voice, speaking in a consistent way, is certainly as part of being understandable, but it's also part about sending the same message from every part of the organization. And so, and this is very brief, I understand that. So what Acrolynx does is help you optimize your content by bringing automation to the process of helping you create content that's consistent, understandable, and findable. 
and we can work with all different parts of the organization who are creating content and, and uh, connect them together uh, to your customers and essentially watch them through Acrolinks so that they do all talk with the same sort of terminology. In some cases, uh, you may want to talk with the same style, the same tone of voice, how personal, how friendly, uh, or how, in, how formal do you want to be in, in how you speak. Acrolinks does do spelling and grammar checking, can check for reading grade level, so that uh, you, can, uh, you can target the education level of your audience. Uh, many of our customers use our software to make sure that their content is more translatable. And that both re that's both uh, a combination of simplifying sentences, helping you, uh, that is helping the author simplify sentences by making sure the verb parts are kept together, by keeping the uh, construction of the sentences simple, and also by reducing word count, by uh, helping the author uh, identify words that are extraneous or phrases that are that could be uh, that could be reduced in the number of words, and improving translatability can also improve com improve comprehension because you simplify your sentences and make your uh, make your terminology simpler and more consistent. Use use fewer uh, long words that will help people who are native speakers to understand your language. People who are speaking your language as a second language, as well as translators. And you can see some other, uh, some other uh, uh, dimensions of content quality that Acrolinks uh, uh, can help with. So there's benefits both internally and externally when it comes to automating the, op the process of optimizing your language internally. Uh, you typically, customers see cost benefits up to 10% in the authoring process. Um, a significant reduction in editing costs because Acrolinks can help editors catch so many uh, problems that editors are typically uh, stuck with catching if there are any editors left. In many organizations, there, uh, there is little or no capacity for editing anyway, but in those cases where there are, uh, um, Acrolinks can, can find problems before they get to the editors, report them to the author, and, uh, and eliminate the cycle of going from the author to the editor, back to the author, back to being fixed, you know, to being fixed, back to the editor. Um, and benefit in translation costs and benefit in time to market. And the customer facing side by making the content more findable, by helping with the placement uh, and, and presence of keywords, um, improving readability, all of, those, uh, all of those areas can have an impact on customer satisfaction and ultimately on, uh, on uh, revenue. So that was a very brief, uh, a brief introduction to Acrolinks. Um, one thing we didn't show, but you're going to see from George is, so how does it work? And you'll see Acrolinks built into Oxygen, essentially plugging into the authoring tool. And uh, what you won't see is Acrolinks, the Acrolinks server in the background that, the, uh, that our integration with the authoring tool talks to. So before I go on, let me... Um, let me do the next polling question. And this, there's, there's two related questions here. The first one is, do you author XML content? Should be pretty simple. Yes, no. There's a not sure, which will be interesting to see if anyone is not sure if you author XML content. So far, no one's not sure. And you don't have to be embarrassed, because we don't know who you are. So if you say you're not sure, you're not going to hear from me later saying, how did you not know? So about three quarters of you have voted already. That seems like a pretty good number. We'll uh, go ahead and close the polls and share the results. So three quarters of you are almost are authoring uh, XML, and one quarter are not. The related question of that is, what authoring app do you currently use? So you see your choice is Oxygen, FrameMaker, Word, something else, and my, my request would be if you're using um, Oxygen at all, then say Oxygen. If you're not using Oxygen at all, but you're using FrameMaker, say FrameMaker. And if you're not using either of those, but you are using Word, say Word. And if you're not using any of those first three, then say Other. Uh, otherwise, don't know. Okay, I'll show, you the I'll show you those results as well. And you can see that about a third of you are using Oxygen. Very good. A little over a quarter are using FrameMaker or Word. Um, the biggest group edging out oxygen by a nose is other, and then finally a few of you do not know. 
Okay, with that, I'm going to turn it over to George. You now have control, and uh, love to see your slides, your desktop, and your uh, your demo. So go ahead. Thank you, PG. Uh, <coughs> uh, as I said, a few words about uh, Syncrosoft and Oxygen. Syncrosoft was, was founded in uh, 1998, uh, and uh, since 2002-2003, we work exclusively on Oxygen. Uh, we started Oxygen XML Editor in 2001. Uh, now we are at version 14.2. We started initially as a tool for XML development and uh, people started to ask us about uh, easier user interface to create XML documents. So we responded to that by adding uh, XML authoring support, this visual editor that we offer for creating XML documents in 2007. Uh, we support a number of standards like DITA, DuckBook, DI, XHTML, but all that is just a configuration and it can be created, a similar support can be created for any XML language. Oxygen is available as a desktop application and this is what I will show today, but also as an Eclipse plugin. So people that already work within Eclipse can use Oxygen directly inside Eclipse as an Eclipse plugin. We also have an SDK uh, that provides uh, the visual editing part as a component. This can be used to build your own Oxygen based application and uh, this can run, uh, your application can run in the browser or in, on the desktop, uh, in the browser as a Java applet. Uh, the SDK provides also support for developing plugins uh, and the many CMS is uh, use that to integrate with Oxygen and this is used also uh, by Acrolinks to create the integration between Acrolinks uh, and Oxygen. We are focused on uh, Oxygen XML and we do not have plans to develop a CMS or a language checking technology uh, or anything uh, other. Uh, so now, uh, as Tom uh, uh, initially, uh, the plan was that Tom will will demo the the Acrolinks integration in Oxygen. Uh, I will move to that now, and then I will come back to the uh, structure part uh, that my slides talk about. So uh, here I have. Uh, uh, a data document that uh, uh, PG sent me uh, a sample uh, and I converted this to data to sh show this in Oxygen. Uh, in order to install the Acrolinks plugin, uh, we provide uh, a support called add-ons and uh, basically you can enter an update site URL and Acrolinks provides the, the Oxygen plugins to this update site uh, support. So you enter a URL and then uh, when you go to manage add-ons you should be able to see uh, uh, the Acrolinks uh, plugin and install that uh, in Oxygen. Uh, and uh, I have a number of uh, plugins already installed. Here you see the Acrolinks plugin. If Acrolinks updates the plugin, I receive a notification and I can uh, install the uh, the new version uh, automatically. So it's very easy to 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 get the plugin installed. Once you install the plugin, you will have these uh, additional actions on the toolbar. These are pretty standard for Acrolinks, so if you use Acrolinks with other uh, tool Word or any other tool they integrate with, uh, you should find these actions familiar. Uh, first thing probably that you need to do is to go to the settings 
and uh, set up your uh, server. Uh, and then you should choose the language, uh, the rule set that you want to use, uh, different rule sets, uh, and uh, different term sets. So basically you need to, to configure your uh, checking experience. Uh, there are also other configuration options to select different colors for different type of uh, uh, issues reported by Acrolinks. Um, <coughs> Also, you have uh, uh, additional options, XML specific uh, about segmentation and filtering. If you want to exclude, for instance, the code, uh, if you have fragments of uh, code of Java code or uh, JavaScript or whatever code in your documents, you may want to exclude them uh, from the checking, for instance. Uh, then, uh, the main uh, check can be triggered uh, with this action. And the server is uh, now hosted by Acrolinks. I think they provide also uh, so the, uh, a, a server version, but the PG can, can provide more details about that. Uh, so I get a report. I can also click on uh, these details to get to uh, the website where I have uh, uh, a summary of uh, a report of uh, the checking that I just performed. But then I can uh, go in Oxygen and uh, when I click OK, all that information is rendered, is highlighted in my document. Uh, now, uh, on the contextual menu of each uh, of these highlights, I have uh, different actions. Uh, as you can see, uh, different type of problems are reported with different colors. Uh, so this says uh, capitalize at beginning of sentence, uh, and I can uh, replace that uh, so I can perform the fix up action directly from here. All uh, replace that uh, in the whole document where, when this, where this problem uh, appears. Right? So I uh, choose uh, to replace the current occurrence and the fix is applied. Uh, there are uh, other, uh, this, is a, this, is a, this is a deprecated term uh, and I have a suggestion here also to replace this uh, uh, Philip head screwdriver with crosshead screwdriver driver uh, and so on there are uh, more checks and then I can uh, use if I as I go through this I can either press next uh, next here or I can say step through mode and then the the contextual dialog stays here in the same location and I can just go through uh, all these uh, highlighted uh, issues and act on them. You know, on each of them I can uh, uh, specify uh, how, how I want to resolve that, that problem. Uh, PG, feel free to, you know, direct me to, if you, or if you want to say some, something about uh, uh, any of uh, uh, these uh, checks, you know, highlight maybe some, uh, this is a term that check should be replaced with uh, make sure, for instance. Right, that's a, um, so that's, that's set up in the terminology system where, um, and, and you, you know, it's easy enough to, to set this up, but uh, we set up in this case the particular rule set to uh, so that make sure, or so that check is, is replaced with make sure because check can have so many different meanings. <clears throat> so replacing check with make sure is, uh, is, uh, is less ambiguous. Um, I'm not as familiar with using this particular rule set for, uh, so there's, there's some, actually some issues that it's not catching. I think the very last one there, the, uh, the very last one on the screen that says, in green, that's a, yeah, if you right-click on that, you'll see that 
the sentence is too long. So you know, longer the you can adjust again. You, the customer can uh, can adjust the length that the, uh, the trigger is sentence too long. I think in this case, it's uh, it's 30 words, and the and the longest before it triggers a, a an error, a message is 26 words. Of course, you can still have sentences longer than that. You can leave it alone and not and not uh, not fix it. But um, this is uh, you know it does bring the author's attention to it. Um, there's some other there's some other things that it checks for that are not in this rule set. That, so it doesn't. It's not very helpful for me to mention that right now. But um, in fact, George, maybe you could go up to the options dialog because uh, this isn't this particular document um, is more of a marketing document than a technical document. And so, if you change that to marketing, and then click on OK, and then uh, and then run the check again. And by the way, as as the check is running, what's happening is is that the software that we have that that, that is on the desktop. Uh, installed on George's desktop, uh, packages up the content as well as the context, send it to the server. In this case, it's uh, a demo server in a different country, and then that server sends back uh, sends back the flags, and, and that's what you see here. So, George, if you go down to the uh, go down to the area where that that's right now, perhaps go up about half a screen, so that that picture is just off the screen. Oh, like this. Go up, so it's just off. And then you can see that um, that there's if if you go down to step 31 where it says turn the power switch off, so that's an example of uh, of, of the two verb parts turn and off are separated. And if you can see in the context menu, the software knows that the right way to say that is turn off the power switch. Easier to translate, easier for machine translation to do, and and uh, easier for someone for whom English is a second language to understand. Turn off the power switch when you say turn the power switch off, um, someone who's not fluent may not understand exactly what that means. And going down to step 33, you'll see uh, that will provide is highlighted. And why is it, why is it highlighted? Well, because it's, um, it's future. It's future tense. And generally speaking, when you're writing Especially um, whether it's marketing information or technical information, I, actually this is more technical than marketing. Now that I think about it, um, you want to avoid future tense, and so you can replace it with either provides or provide, depending on what works. In this case, it's check that the well, it would be make sure that the rack provides sufficient clearance. Um, going down to step 35, uh, the second flag says with the exception of. Well, that's just a very wordy way to say except for. And getting rid of words is a good thing, both for uh, both for clarity and uh, and for translation costs. So you can see there's lots and lots of different things that uh, that uh, Acrolinks can check for. It checks for terminology, checks for um, grammar issues that aren't really grammar issues in the sense of uh, being wrong. I mean, turn the power switch off isn't wrong. It's just not as clear as it could be, and uh, and one thing we're not seeing, but certainly could see, is looking for style issues, tone of voice issues, such as uh, passive voice, or um, or use of first person, second person, third person, that kind of thing. So thanks for letting me uh, jump in on that, George. Back to you. You know more than I do. <laughs> A few uh, times. So uh, basically what this integration provides is that uh, these checks are available to the author as he creates the content. And then it is a lot easier to fix them immediately as they are created, as issues are created than to wait, you know, until a review process later on and discover this, uh, this issue then. Uh, Okay, I will, as I'm on this demo, uh, this support uh, is created by Acrolinks, this plugin, and I mentioned that Oxygen is available also as a component, so you can build your own uh, XML authoring applications that use Oxygen uh, as a base, and we have uh, a sample uh, that uh, uh, 
includes uh, shows the the outer component used in the browser and what we've made uh, we allow the plugins uh, that are developed for the Oxygen desktop application to be used also with the outer component. So you can have the Acrolinks integration without any effort basically in your own application that uses the Oxygen outer component either if that is a desktop application or if it runs in the browser as a web application. So here you can see it's Firefox. Uh, this is a, a web page and we have the Oxygen uh, uh, editing function editor here, but uh, you can also see the same toolbar with the Acrolinks actions and I could trigger uh, the same check uh, also from, from this. Uh, and then I get uh, the, the issues uh, highlighted. Uh, again, this uh, now uh, the configuration took uh, uh, the marketing uh, uh, set, but if we move to the data set, I want to show you uh, some overlap between uh, the check for content that Acrolix provides and uh, the check for uh, struct the, the structural checks that uh, Oxygen helps with. Uh, there is a small overlap in what Acrolix and Oxygen does. For instance, if you look here uh, at this uh, data map, uh, Acrolix has missing UE con user interface control element. So they also go a little in the in the structural part, uh, directing the user that uh, data map should be enclosed in uh, a user interface control element should be marked up as uh, user interface. So I can you know just select this and type uh, UI control and uh, let me put the tags on. So you can see, so if I put this inside U user interface control, then uh, next check will not flag this as a problem anymore. Okay, so that's uh, uh, the demo part that shows basically uh, the same Acrolinks plugin developed for the Oxygen desktop available in the browser or it can also work in a desktop application that uses this uh, outer component uh, to create an application. Now coming back to the structure part uh, uh, There was a question at the beginning if you used uh, XML documents or not. Uh, Office documents are XML in the last versions, uh, like uh, both Open Office XML and Open Document format are XML based formats. So if you edit in Word these days, then or Excel or Open Office, you actually change XML documents. Uh, XHTML is XML uh, and if you use data uh, and only the highlight domain uh, like bold, italic, uh, underscore, uh, subscript, subscript, um, teletype, then that is XML but it doesn't bring uh, a lot of value. That is not great structure. For great structure you need to use the right elements to encode the semantics of your content. Uh, and uh, an XML language add that semantic part because XML is just syntax uh, and you cannot create great structure if you do not want to know anything about what you try to achieve about the language, the XML language that you will use to encode uh, the, the content. 
there are people that uh, think that they only need bold italic to be like work and that should be enough uh, but that will not get you even if you use XML it will not get you the benefits of actually creating uh, a, a good XML structure, a great XML structure that will, will mark the information with semantic uh, tags. I prepared uh, a couple of example documents where you can see uh, I have an HTML document here. Uh, this describes uh, Uh, the text field form control in uh, in oxygen. Then the same information is available in this data document and also in this data document. As you can see, all of these uh, initially they look more or less the same uh, if you look at them, right? But then if you look the structure of the HTML document, you can see uh, here that all we have uh, is a heading, paragraphs, uh, then an uh, unordered list. Maybe I should just switch on the tags here uh, in the author mode. So we just have some lists uh, and then for formatting tags like bold to mark these uh, properties here. And then the example is again a paragraph, uh, bold, uh, another paragraph and uh, uh, preformatted, the code is put uh, as preformatted content. If we use DITA, right, we should, we may say, okay, this is better, it's DITA it's not HTML, but if we look into this data document, we see that it is pretty similar with the HTML document that we had earlier. It's again uh, paragraphs, then we have lists, uh, we have uh, stay here again, we have in a similar way uh, using bold to mark the, the property names, uh, and then the example is again in in a paragraph and to use a highlight domain the, the highlight domain to uh, emphasize the uh, example title and so on but if we look at this document then you can see that here we have uh, a parameter list that contains parameter list entries and then each uh, parameter, each property is, uh, is a parameter term and then it has a parameter description. Uh, the example is marked explicitly as an example. This is a code block, it's not just some preformatted uh, content, right? So you see that XML is not enough, data is not enough. You can have, uh, you know, uh, similar with unstructured formats, similar information with unstructured formats, even if you use XML or data. Your goal will be to have a good structure, a quality structure on your XML documents not just XML or just uh, data. That is not enough. And now it comes the role of authoring tools to help to help authors create uh, a good structure and explain them how and what each element, each attribute represents. And this is what we try in uh, Oxygen. Uh, we, and I will highlight here just a few of uh, uh, maybe some distinguished 
or important parts that oxygen offer uh, to create good structure. Oxygen provides the available options to the user, the valid options at every point. And more than this, oxygen describes what they mean. Oxygen checks the validity of the documents and Oxygen can enforce and can notify users when business rules that you set uh, fail. So you can enforce your company rules on your documents. Uh, available options are provided through content completion, elements view, attributes views, uh, the description of uh, what each element or attribute mean uh, or values is realized either through uh, schema annotations or DTD comments. So Oxygen automatically extracts this uh, from the schema and presents that to the end user. We allow also to add uh, additional documentation for each of these elements or attributes like a link to the guidelines or to the style guide of that XML language or a link to the language specification to the specification of data for instance or the specification of topbook. The validity can be checked against uh, a DTD, a schema, XML schema, RelaxNG, NVDL and in some cases the the power of XML schemas do not, cannot express what the specification says and some of those rules can be put again in rules with Schematron. And uh, enforcing company rules is done again with Schematron and I will have a few examples. Uh, you can check the structure. I mentioned that there is a little overlap between Acrolinks, what Acrolinks does on the content and what Oxygen does on the structure and the content. You've seen that Acrolinks can provide hints about the structure. Also, uh, Oxygen through Schematron can provide hints or notify the, the author about issues with content. Of course, uh, we are mainly focused on the structure and the, the checks that you can perform on the content are very limited. They do not have the, the intelligence or power of what Acrolinks provides. Um, but with Schematron you can suggest a solution and link to a detailed description of the problem. And uh, let's go back to a short demo uh, sh to show this. Uh, Uh, we integrated for our next release uh, the data style guide from Tony Self in Oxygen. And uh, some of the style guide rules can be automatically detected. Some checks specified in the style guide can be detected automatically with Schematron. And I I do not want to get you to know Schematron, but the idea is that the schema is the rules are really easy. So here, for instance, we match on a note and we count the number of block elements inside that note. And then if we have only one block element, this URL from the style guide says that uh, if there is just one block of text in the note, then that note should be left as a string only. So if we have only one block, we inform the user that he should remove that block element and we point him to the URL of the style guide that describes that problem. The same here, uh, this rule does not allow to have block elements and text. So you, you, you should not mix text and block elements. And the third rule says if your note starts with note, then that's not 
great because the rendering will already display note so you, you will get a duplicate and I, I prepared here a, a data task to show these problems uh, these rules can be checked automatically but I put them to be checked only when I validate on request uh, and in the, in the case where I have uh, uh, mixed content I put the, the role to be error not warning that's why we see this uh, in red and if we look at these problems you can see here it says uh, please remove note note text that's, uh, uh, that starts your note. Uh, the markup uh, and then it points, it gives me a, a part from the data style guide. If I click here, this gets me to the style guide topic exactly that describes this problem. I should not start a note with, uh, with note, right? because I get this uh, duplicate also when I transform this to a different output format. If I have just one paragraph inside the note, maybe I should put the, the tags on so you can see. If I have just one paragraph inside the note, then Oxygen says from that schematron, it says please remove the P element and place its text directly in the note. And again it points me to uh, the style guide page to exactly the style guide topic that uh, that describes this. You see exactly this paragraph. And you can see that if I change for instance uh, uh, the paragraph, let's say we let's say we rename these to um, code block then if we validate it says previously remove the code block element and place its text directly in the node that is the rule automatically can provide even information from the document uh, we do this here please remove the and then match on the element name that is actually present in the document and the last uh, error is uh, about mixing text directly inside note and uh, block elements and this is marked as an error because this is what we decided to put in our rule. Uh, and here I, I, the idea with Schematron is that the error message is written by the schema author. So here we can provide information to the user not only about the problem but also how he should correct that problem. You should wrap the text you, that you enter directly inside the note in a P element. Uh, you know, we can see the message here uh, in a P element or another block element or move it inside one of the existing block elements. Alternatively, remove all the block elements and leave the node to contain only text. Right? So, you can write this description here in, in the Schematron rule. Uh, now, about uh, the description of each element, you can see that uh, Oxygen provides this description. The first part is extracted from the TTD. Then we also have links to the style guide and to the data specification. So when you click here, you get to the style guide to a, to a topic that describes short descriptions. And if you click here, you will get to the Oasis website where the specification provides uh, information about short description. So 
these hints allow you to understand, to, to go to different uh, locations where you can read about the element you are about to use. Um, and this happens, you know, also when uh, you want to insert a new element. You can see here you get, uh, for each such element, you get this description here. So you can uh, read that, or if you want more details, you can click and go either to the specification or to the style guide where we have that information. Okay, let me go back to the slides. Uh, another uh, part of the help that we provide on the data structure is providing an insight into your data documents. What do you use? What elements you use? What attributes you use? What do you reuse? And so on. And what I find very interesting is also the domain projection. Data comes with different domains. And I have here uh, an example of uh, this report. So this can be generated from Oxygen if you uh, have uh, a data map open, like our user guide. Uh, and then, sorry, not this one. Uh, data map. And then here you say data map matrix report. I have this already generated uh, here for our user manual. And you can see, you know, like uh, we have five maps, uh, how many topics we have in our maps, uh, and then what uh, map elements, uh, uh, what type of maps you use, what type of, what information types we use for the topics, and then how many elements, how many are unique, and so on uh, uh, for maps, for topics, and then we get, uh, uh, you know, like uh, how many uh, the elements ordered by frequency uh, for maps, then for topics. And I said that uh, what I like a lot is the domain analysis because we take all this information and project that on domains. So I can see, uh, for instance, how we use the programming domain and we can see what elements we use from the programming domain and then we see that we don't use some elements from the programming domain and then you know you may want to ask yourself should I use maybe uh, these elements that are not used maybe I should go back to my code and remove some of the highlight elements that we use and use actually semantic elements that actually describe uh, my content uh, and uh, so on, you can see, you know, what uh, domains you use and what elements you use on each domain. And then you can see on the reuse, what, you re what elements you reuse, same information for attributes, and then we, uh, what conditional attributes and what values are used for those attributes, and information about the orts or uh, uh, about the number of characters and uh, what processing instructions are used. We can see that we have, for instance, uh, oxygen change tracking markup uh, in, uh, in that document. Uh, oxygen plus acrolinks in the browser, I already presented this. Uh, and this concludes my presentation. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have a number of com com upcoming Oxygen events uh, listed on our events program uh, on our website. So is this, uh, uh, you can see next that next week we will have uh, a couple of DITA specific, uh, a DITA a first webinar on DITA support in Oxygen. Then a few conferences we attend so you can meet us. And you can get in touch with me on uh, at Oxygen at OxygenXML.org george at oxygenxml.com or george be now on twitter thank you nicely done george thank you i'm going to uh, put up your contact information along with tom's contact information and here it is <clears throat> and um if you do care to contact me uh, i have the same kind of uh, 
email pattern that Tom does, pg.bartlett, that's P as in Peter, G as in George, dot B-A-R-T-L-E-T-T -T -T at aqualinks.com. There were a lot of questions, George, and there's a few still unanswered, and uh, so I think we should get to those first. There's some interesting questions among those that were already answered privately, but we'll be glad to, uh, if time permits, and we won't go past the hour, but if time permits, we can certainly uh, review the more interesting questions that might have general appeal in a moment. Well, let's start with the first one here is, um, well, maybe, I don't know if Alex wants to get in on this, um, but is the Schematron integration with Tony's did a style guide available in Oxygen 4.2, 14 uh, 14.2? I, I will answer that. Uh, um, uh, no, because the, the style guide integration will be available in the next Oxygen release, so it cannot be in 14.2. Gotcha, good, thank you. Um, and, then, uh, and then another question here, does the author need to be connected to the internet to access the data style guide and did it 1.2 specs using the links shown? Um, right now, yes, but uh, uh, because we decided uh, 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 to put it, uh, so Tony, Tony Self was, you know, I, I want to thank, uh, thank Tony for allowing us to, to use the style guide. Uh, we published that as web help plus feedback so on the website, if you go on the on on, the, on our website where that is where those link point to, then you can also provide feedback on those topics, uh, and Tony will be able and us will be able to respond to that and maybe you know uh, update the style guide based on the user feedback, and then uh, everything can work also locally, if. Uh, uh, we have uh, the possibility to provide, uh, you know, the same uh, information as a framework in Oxygen, and all it needs is a catalog to map the remote resources, an XML catalog that will map the remote resources to the local copy. So it will be possible to use that also offline uh, uh, if we will provide, you know, an additional framework that contains the style guide and the catalog uh, to redirect those to the local copy. So it sounds like the answer is yes, but it could be changed. The answer could be changed uh, to no through configuration. Yes, so, so uh, if needed, it can be made available also offline. Okay, good. Excellent. Um, uh, next question, I think it really is, I don't know if it's a question for you or for me, but um, could be for either of us, which is, do you integrate with Drupal? And I can tell you the answer from the uh, Aquilink side is no. George? And also from the Oxygen side is no. Uh, there was, uh, we have an open API that was used by uh, CMS vendors to integrate Oxygen with different, with their repositories. And that can be used to create also a Drupal integration, but that is not done. <coughs> Okay, good. We've got a time for a couple more questions here. They've already been answered for the individual who asked them, but <clears throat> I think they're interesting questions. One of them is, is uh, so how do you insert illustrations and artwork into Oxygen? Uh, there are specific data actions, and uh, you can also just drag and drop uh, a file uh, from uh, Explorer or Finder or whatever operating system you use or directly from the Oxygen project view into the uh, data editor and you will have the image inserted there. It's as easy as that. Good. Um, someone asked, will these tools integrate with Madcap Flare? I assume you're talking about Acrolinks <laughs> and the answer is we do not have an integration with Madcap Flare. It's the uh, it's the most popularly requested integration that we do not do. So maybe someday. Um, let's see. Uh, I think that's all of the questions that I think are generally interesting. Um, there are a couple more coming in. They're not coming in. And for some reason, they're not sorted in the right order here. Here we are. Um, can Acrolinks be used to assess opportunity for reuse? 
If you're talking about reuse at, say, the sentence level, the answer is yes. If you're talking about reuse at a higher level, such as, uh, gosh, this topic that you've just written looks awfully similar to a topic that already exists, that's something we've talked about doing, but that is not something that we do today. So the reuse uh, that we do today is at the sentence level, and, and, and it can be very effective. Uh, anything more than that, though, the answer is no. And you know what? We're right at the top of the hour. We've run out of questions, so it's perfect timing. George, thank you again for um, for uh, presenting. We really appreciate it, and uh, and I uh, I hope that Tom, wherever he is, is uh, is able to get back home and get back online. And thank you for inviting us, and uh, thanks everyone for uh, attending. Absolutely, glad to have you all, everyone. Uh, hope to see you next time. Thanks all. Bye-bye. Goodbye.